We are in a biodiversity crisis right now. We are losing species to extinction, known and unknown, at a rapid rate. You know, when habitat is destroyed, it's not just Snow White's friends in the forest that are impacted, but everyone. When the forest burns, how do we get a new forest? It's the biodiversity that regrows in that area and reconstitutes the forest. So several years ago, the U.S. Forest Service asked us and a bunch of other partners to come and join them in a workshop to try and understand what does it mean to make the forest more resilient. Groups had banded together to do a prescribed burn in a small watershed called Capel's Creek. So we were able to get three years of data before the prescribed burn to study what was there. And then we could study after the prescribed burn to see how the forest bounced back or recovered after the disturbance. And so in order to measure how successful the fire was at restoring resilience to the forest, we looked to the birds. There are birds that do all kinds of different things that live in the canopy tops, that live on the forest floor, that feed on vegetation, that feed on seeds, that feed on insects, etc. So you're actually taking a, a nice pulse or you know, a good sample of the health of the forest when you study birds. The way that we normally study bird diversity in the forest is we do point counts. The point count methodology is probably almost 50 years old and it involves a team of researchers waking up well before sunrise hiking in the dark to go out to a designated set of points along a landscape. And then we sit in a single place for about 10 minutes and we count every bird we can detect within about 100 meters. The way that we detect birds when we're in the field is by listening. Birds are vocal, they use their songs and their calls to communicate with one another. About 95% of the detections that we have are sound only. Before this work with the Google research team, we would usually, you know, just do point counts and it took a lot of time, it took a lot of manpower, it took a lot of, you know, very experienced researchers, which really limited what we could do, how much we could study. Working with the Google research team has been amazing. I feel like I've been waiting over a decade for the right machine learning tools to come along to help us do the research that we want and need to do. So the reason we really want to get into the automated recording units is we can just get the microphones out there, run them for a few days or a week, and just hear everything that's going on in that environment. Acoustic recorders allow us to be 100 places at once and for a week at a time. We have a much better chance of detecting who's there and for how long than our traditional surveys alone. With all that data, that is way more than a single human being can annotate or a fleet of graduate students can annotate. It's a lot more effort to go through all that data. So we built a bird classifier for that. So something that hears a bit of audio tells you what species is present. We also built a automatic sound separation algorithm that, you know, when you have multiple birds singing over one another, it pulls them apart into different channels, and then we can classify them individually. The first time that Google had processed our first set of data, they handed us 16 million observations of a bird making a sound and classified into the different bird species that made that sound. But just tossing a lot of output at your collaborators is only part of the solution. The Google research team isn't just building a bird classifier. We're building a set of tools that enable the entire community to learn from their own data. The, the task then is to take these millions and millions of observations, translate them into reliable estimates of each species' presence so that we can then map their movement on the landscape and, and map their occupancy relative to, for example, in our case, the prescribed fire, how the prescribed fire burned. Machine learning and the tools that Lauren and Tom and I and all of our team have developed together, they certainly don't replace scientists in the field. We integrate the machine learning data with boots on the ground traditional surveys as a ground truth to give us power to detect changes that maybe neither data type alone would allow us to do. The machine learning has allowed us to approach this in a whole new way. We can ask much bigger questions. Instead of getting data from the Capels Creek watershed, we can get the entire El Dorado National Forest, or we can get the entire Sierra Nevada. Biodiversity is 
probably changing as rapidly as it has in any of our lifetimes. And to be able to track that and, and understand what's happening and measure it, the more we can respond to it appropriately.